Yesterday, I had received a call from a high school teacher who has a student with a very heavy period. This student has excused themselves to use the restroom so often that some of the instructors started to deny restroom privileges. What? The student's parent actually talked to the teacher, and the teacher asked if the parent had ever heard of menstrual cups. The teacher then called me and asked if I had any introduction to menstrual cup videos. Sadly, I didn't as I had gone right into comparing cups and talking about specific cups when I first started my channel. So today I'm going all the way back to the very beginning with what are menstrual cups and an introduction about them. If you're interested in hearing more about menstrual cups and some pros and cons, stay tuned. Hello everyone, it's Red Herring. I hope you're having a great day. Any websites, links, or discount codes that I might have at this time will be in the description below. If you find anything helpful or interesting in this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Before I begin, I am not a doctor and I don't claim to be a professional or an expert. I'm just someone who purchased one, two, too many cups uh, on my quest to find the cup that I wanted and needed for my menstrual flow. This gave me an opportunity to share my experience with others. What is a menstrual cup? A menstrual cup is an alternative menstrual product to the items that we typically see offered at the store, such as disposable pads and tampons. Most, but not all, menstrual cups are made with a medical grade silicone, which means that it has been tested for biocompatibility, that it shows no toxicity when coming into contact with living tissues. There are some cheapies and knockoff cups which may claim to be medical grade silicone, but may not be. There are also a few cups made out of thermal plastic elastomers, better known as TPE, which can also be medical grade. And there are two cups that are currently on the market right now that are made from latex rubber. If you have any latex allergies, you will want to stay clear from these. Are menstrual cups something new? The first menstrual cup-like device that we know of was patented back in the 1860s. There was another patent in 1932 and 1935, but the very first actual usable menstrual cup wasn't patented until 1937. There was another patent in 1950 and 1960, and then in 1987, the Keeper came out, and it's still available today. All of these cups were made out of latex rubber. How does a menstrual cup work? A menstrual cup is folded and inserted into the vagina near the cervix. The cup collects your flow instead of absorbing it like a tampon would. When the cup is ready to be emptied, you remove it, dump the contents into the toilet or down the drain, rinse it off and reuse it or store it away for your next period. Since a menstrual cup doesn't absorb like a tampon would, it cuts down on dryness and micro tears, which can be uncomfortable and may add to the risk of infections. Here are some benefits to using menstrual cups. Menstrual cups are reusable. It saves you in monthly costs and reduces waste. They're easy to care for. You wash it and reuse it or store it away for your next period. One cup will last upwards to 10 years with proper care. No more stocking up on supply, no more running out of supply, and no more carrying extras when you leave the house. They can be worn safely for up to 12 hours depending on how light or heavy your flow is. At the beginning of your period when it's a little heavier, you'll probably find yourself emptying your cup more closer to three to six hours. When your period starts to lighten up, you can wear it for a longer amount of time, maybe even up to the full 12 hours. A super-sized tampon holds approximately 10 milliliters of fluid. The average large-sized menstrual cup holds about 30 milliliters, and there's even a cup that holds a whopping 50 milliliters. So menstrual cups can be great for someone who has a very heavy period. You may have less bathroom breaks and be able to play, sleep, do whatever you want to do for a longer amount of time. When a cup fits and is positioned properly, you can't feel it at all. 
There is also no string to worry about if you're wearing a bathing suit. Although some people don't mind the stem positioned outside of the body, most of us like to trim the stem down or completely off so that we don't feel it at all. Menstrual cups don't interfere with your body's pH and bacterial balance. Although blood does have a certain smell, which most people describe as an iron smell, since the cup collects the blood and keeps it in a liquid state, the blood doesn't dry out and start to create an overgrowth of bacteria, which can lead to foul odors. And the last on my pros list, although there are so many more, and hopefully some of my viewers will chime in, is that a menstrual cup is safe to use even when you're not menstruating. So you can use the cup when you are expecting your period but didn't start yet, or practice inserting and removing it when you're not bleeding. On the note of practicing, if you do start to feel a little drier, you can use a water-based personal lubricant to help ease the cup in. Some things to know before using a menstrual cup. Just like everything else, there are some cons to weigh before you make a choice, and it's no different than when you are choosing to use a menstrual cup. So here are some things that you might want to think about or know. There is a learning curve. It's something new to you, and it's different from anything that you've been taught. Just like when you first started using tampons, if you used them, you weren't quite sure how to use the applicator, how far to insert it, and what position to place it in. It's going to be the same with menstrual cups. But once you get the hang of it, you won't regret it. It may seem messier at first, but with practice, that will be minimal. One size does not fit all. There are some things that you can think about when narrowing down which menstrual cup might work for you best, but that's a whole nother video, so I'm going to leave a link to that information at the end of this video as well as in the description box. It might seem impossible to use a menstrual cup if you only have access to a public restroom, but you can pack some baby wipes in a pocket or a wet cloth, have a small water bottle in your purse or bag, or even just wet a paper towel from the restroom before you go into the stall so you can clean yourself up and wipe your hands before leaving the stall. And lastly, the biggest complaint that I hear is the initial cost. On average, a menstrual cup will cost you about $25 USD. If you're the type of person that wants to have an extra cup just in case, or you need two cups because maybe your cervix is lower at the beginning of your period and you need a shorter cup and higher during the end of your period and you need a longer cup, then now you're spending $50 instead of $25. But keep in mind that once you find a menstrual cup that works for you, you shouldn't need to buy another one for the next 10 years. Who can use a menstrual cup? Honestly, anyone who is comfortable with the inserting and removing process can use a menstrual cup just fine. If you've used a tampon before and you're comfortable with inserting and removing it, then you should be just fine using a menstrual cup as they fold up about the same size as a tampon. Some other things that people mention when talking about menstrual cups is less chemicals like bleach and fragrances that menstrual cups have a lower risk of TSS, that they lessen cramps, or shorten or lighten your period. These are things that you'll need to look up for yourself, read reviews and what people have said, because there have been no scientific tests to back any of these claims. When you first start using a menstrual cup, it is going to be trial and error. And since we're all different, I can't guarantee that one cup is going to work for you better than another cup. The only thing you can do is try to narrow down your selection. Again, I will leave you a link at the end of this video and in the description box that might help you do that. Thank you to Mrs. O for the phone call yesterday. I hope that this helps your student and maybe some other students. And please remind them that our body and our period really shouldn't be something taboo to talk about. For the rest of you, if you continue on with your menstrual cup journey, I wish you lots of luck. Contact me if you have any questions and take care until I see you next time.